Hi, my name is Eric Johnson, and I'm a senior developer advocate for serverless at AWS. This video is part of a series that covers the AWS SAM CLI. In this video, I discuss the SAM init command. The SAM init command initializes a serverless application with an AWS SAM template. The template can be one of the AWS managed templates or a custom template maintained by you. The AWS managed template provides a folder structure for your Lambda functions and configures a Lambda function with an event source such as an Amazon API gateway, an Amazon S3 bucket, an Amazon DynamoDB table, or any number of other event sources available in SAM. This project includes everything you need to get started and to eventually extend it into a production scale application. Before I get started, to run this and any of the other examples in this series, you will need to have the AWS SAM CLI installed. For instructions on installing the SAM CLI, follow the s12d.com forward slash install dash SAM link listed in the comments. All right, that's enough of my yammering. Let's look at an example. Using my terminal, I'm going to run the command SAM init. I am then presented with a choice between using it an AWS Quick Start template or a custom template. In this first example, I choose AWS Quick Start template. I am now presented with a list of available runtimes. This list represents natively supported runtimes available for Lambda functions. I choose Python 3.8. Next, I'm asked to choose a name for my application. I'm going to name it Python-Demo. Finally, I'm asked to choose from a list of AWS Quick Start templates. This particular list is for the Python runtime. However, different runtimes have different managed template examples. I choose Hello World example. The same CLI then generates my application and prints out a report including the next steps which can be found in the runtime specific readme file. Taking a look at the resulting file structure, I can see that I have an events folder that contains a test event for local development. There's a hello world folder that contains the source code and requirements file for dependencies. And there's a tests folder that contains unit tests for the application. And the root of the project is the readme.md file for instructions and the template.yaml file, which is the same template for this application. Opening the template.yaml file, I first see that this is a SAM template, as indicated by the serverless transform found on line 2. In the resources section, the template declares a single AWS Lambda function that uses an Amazon API Gateway REST API as the event source. I can see that the code URI parameter on line 17 points to the Hello World folder as the source code for the Lambda function. This example template is designed for each Lambda function and its dependencies to be managed as separate sub-applications within this serverless application. Therefore, the code URI sets the root of this Lambda function to be the Hello World folder. If I wanted to add a second Lambda function in this application, I can simply copy the entire Hello World function and update the code and required dependencies as needed. Structuring the application this way requires me to manage dependencies for each Lambda function separately, but ensures that each function is packaged with only the dependencies required for that function. However, what if I wanted to create a serverless application with shared dependencies? To do this, I will create a new application using a different managed template. Following the same process as before, I'm going to use SAM init to generate the new application. However, this time I'm going to choose Node.js 12.x as my runtime and the Quick Start web backend as my template. As I look at the structure for this new application, I can see that I now have a generic SRC or source folder instead of the Hello World folder. Within this folder, I have another folder called handlers that contain the source code for three different Lambda functions, get all items, get by ID, and put items. I can also see that the package.json file is now in the root of my project. If you're not familiar with the package.json file, this is the file used by the Node Package Manager, or NPM, to manage dependencies for the application, much like the requirements.txt file in Python or the pom.xml file in Java. Looking in the template.yaml file, 
I can see that there is now quite a bit more resources being built for this application. Additionally, there's a lot of comments to help explain what everything is. Looking at the get all items resource, I can see that this is a Lambda function that uses a REST API as an event source. I can also see that on line 30, CRUD access is being given to an Amazon DynamoDB table, and that table is being added as an environment variable on line 34. One thing that is missing from this resource is a code URI. I have a handler parameter, but not the code URI. If a code URI parameter is not declared, then CMCLI will assume that the code URI or code location matches the same location as the template.yaml file, which is generally the root. I can see, based on this, that the handler is referenced from the root of the project. By configuring a serverless project this way, I can now manage dependencies for all the Lambda functions at the same time, rather than for each function individually. The downside is, when I am deploying the application, all dependencies will be packaged with each Lambda function. In larger applications with many Lambda functions and dependencies, this can lead to application bloat. Later in this series, I will discuss how Lambda layers can help to avoid that. For previous example applications, I use the AWS Quick Start templates to initialize my apps. However, now that I have been using SAM templates for a while, I have a certain way I like my templates to be set up. For example, I have a simple web app starter template that has all the comments removed, uses the global section of the SAM template to reduce code, and uses an HTTP API instead of a REST API as an event source. To create a new application with my starter template, I'm going to use the custom template location during the application initialization. Before I run SAM init, I'm going to create a directory for my application and then change to that directory. SAM will copy the files from my custom template to this directory during the SAM init process. Once again, I start the process with the SAM init command, but this time choose custom template location. Sam now asks me the location of the template and expects one of several options. The options are the root of a Git repository, a Mercurial repository, an HTTPS address to a zip file, or a path to a local zip file. In this instance, I am choosing a path to a local zip file. Once I have selected my custom template location, Sam then copies the file to the new directory and exits the process. I can now see that the new application is in place. Opening the template.yaml, I can see that the comments are gone, the global section is added, and the Lambda functions now use an HTTP API as the event source. So far, we have covered AWS Quick Start templates, custom templates, and a little bit of application structure. I want to take a moment to demonstrate another option available in the SAM init process. For this example, I'm going to create a project for developing in Java. I start with the SAM init command and select AWS Quick Start Templates. I then choose the Java 8.AL2 runtime. This runtime means I'll be running Java 8 Coretto on Amazon Linux 2. At this point, I am presented with a new option that we haven't seen before. Sam wants to know if I want to manage my dependencies with Maven or Gradle. Because Sam integrates with either of these package managers, I can choose which I prefer. In this instance, I am choosing Maven and then completing the Sam init process as per usual. Until now, I have been using the interactive method to build my applications. Sam also offers a non-interactive method. Developers will find this handy when needing to create web applications dynamically without having to answer questions interactively. To use SAM init without interaction, just pass the no interactive flag. When doing so, all other required values must be passed on the command line as well. Here's an example of a Go application being created without the interactive prompts. For a full list of parameters and how to use them, see the documentation link in the comments below. This has been an overview of the AWS SAM CLI SAM init command. In this session, I covered creating applications from AWS Quick Starts as well as custom templates. I also spent a little time in application architecture and how dependencies are managed. For more videos in the series, visit the Serverless Land YouTube playlist at sd12.com learn-sam 
And for more content like this, visit the HTTPS serverlesslane.com website. Once again, my name is Eric Johnson. You can find me on Twitter at EDJGeek. I hope you've enjoyed this because serverless for everyone. <laughs>